I'm here representing uh, Committee 2 to talk about the dosimetric models for assessment for eye exposures. Um, a lot of this uh, is involved in the ICRP publica publication 116, which was uh, generated by uh, the DOCAL task group, task group 4, uh, ably uh, led by Nina Patusi from uh, Helmholtz Mutin. Uh, this was the first major revision of uh, dose coefficients for ocular, well, for, for all external exposures, uh, and made use of the reference male and reference female voxel phantoms produced in ICRP publication 110. Uh, this provides uh, 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 organ dose equivalents, also effective dose for unit particle fluence for a whole range of different uh, particles and energies, photons, neutrons, electrons, positrons, muons, pions, and helium ions. Uh, as in the case, so, so we were using these voxel phantoms, and as in the case for all voxel phantoms, there are issues with limitations of the voxel resolution. So for example, in the, these are uh, really uh, based on prior CT exams to, to create these phantoms. So for the voxel male phantom adopted in publication 110, you had a 2 by 2 by 8 millimeter voxel resolution. For the females, a little bit better, essentially 2 by 2 by 5 millimeters. A lot of the structures, such as the eye lens, can't be, res uh, can't be properly represented at that resolution. So we have to imply, uh, invoke other uh, supplementary models. Uh, 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 John Harrison previously had talked about uh, additional stylized models used for the alimentary tract and the respiratory tract in uh, 66 and 100. Uh, the skeleton, uh, which uh, is uh, specifically dealt with in terms of photon skeletal dosimetry and neutron skeletal dosimetry in the annexes, uh, D and E of uh, publication 116. Uh, skin was addressed in Annex G of 116, and, and of course for this uh, presentation we look at the eye lens, uh, which was in an Annex F of uh, publication 116. Uh, so, uh, in this Annex F, we specifically look at the eye lens, uh, and this annex provides absorbed dose per particle fluence for photons, 10 keV to, to uh, 10 GeV, electrons, 10 keV to 10 GeV, and for neutrons, thermal energies up to uh, 10 GeV. As I said, we couldn't use the, the voxel phantoms. Uh, in some of these phantoms, the, the eye lens uh, was represented by maybe one or two voxels. Um, so we had to invoke a, a stylized model, and there was some very nice work by Rolf uh, Behrens, uh, Gunther Dietze at PTB, uh, and Maria Zankel at, at Helmholtz Mutchen, uh, published in 2009. And this, uh, this is a, a diagram on the left, is uh, the stylized model, and some uh, uh, kind of NERPS modeling is, is shown uh, on the other side. Uh, we had a, 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 essentially, in this work, a, a standalone model of the eye uh, used for electron dosimetry. For photons and neutrons, you needed to consider the non-ocular tissues, the bony anatomy surrounding the eye in terms of scatter and, and absorption, and so those stylized models were placed in a, in a larger uh, stylized model of the head. Uh, that model itself was based on a very early publication, very excellent publication by Charles and Brown, published in P, uh, PMB back in 1975. Um, and this study provided very important information on ocular dimensions, uh, thicknesses, depths, angular uh, extents of various eye uh, uh, tissues, and, all, and more importantly for cataract induction, the location of the target cells. Here's, a, here's an example. There's many examples of the, uh, the dimensional data that are part of this paper. Uh, this is showing the, the uh, essentially the, the thickness of the, uh, of the uh, anterior chamber, essentially the inside of the, the inner uh, region of the cornea to the surface of the eye lens. Uh, and if you look carefully uh, at the age of reference man, you go up here and our wonderful three millimeters, that's where the three millimeters comes from in terms of the personal dose equivalent uh, is represented here. And this is looking at that dimension of the individual variations, but also as a function of age. Uh, so looking at all those dimensions, they came up with a representative reference eye uh, in looking at the dimensions of the cornea, the uh, anterior, anterior chamber depth, the three millimeters, as we had talked about the, the dimensions of the lens. Um, <coughs> And so that was reference, looking at the, at the means of all these. Uh, but of course, you were looking at uh, between uh, the, the extremes are also discussed in this publication. So on the left, we have a deep lying lens, essentially a young, uh, nearsighted individual, uh, to a shallow lens, uh, a much wider lens uh, for an old, uh, uh, far sighted individual. Uh, so data was taken from this study to, to develop this stylized model. And I'll just read a quick statement. The equatorial portion 
Well, for, first of all, the, uh, the lens is, is described as a convex shape uh, with a rounded junction, and the two surfaces is called the equator. And so you'll talk about the equatorial region of the lens, and that's what they're talking about. Uh, in this statement, uh, which was quoted as uh, personal com communication in this article, the equatorial portion of the anterior epithelium of the lens was the anatomical region generally considered the most radiosensitive part for the susceptibility for the deduction to lens opacities. Uh, committee one did not have data at, uh, 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 on the depth of this portion of the lens, and it was thought that that information would be part of the task group on reference man, ISO 23. Uh, so in this stylized model, whoop, so on this stylized model, you'll see the, uh, the lens in light green in this little region of red, that is the, the radiosensitive uh, tissues. And so in these calculations, we calculated, or the, the group calculated an average lens dose, but also a dose to the radiosensitive portions of the lens. So here's some examples. So this is now for photon irradiations. And so you see in the, uh, in the blue uh, are the actual uh, dose coefficients as a function of photon energy absorbed dose per unit fluence or the, the reference voxel phantoms, uh, but also in uh, uh, red, the total lens dose from the stylized model, uh, and in the green, this radiosensitive portion of the stylized model. And you can see there are some differences in the photon energy range 1 to 10, uh, and then the, the solid curve is what was adopted as reference. You can see this a little bit more uh, in detail for electron irradiations, where a large difference occurs, uh, essentially the, the you, you really highlight the inadequacies of the voxel phantom for looking at this tissue structure. At very low lo electron energies below uh, um, uh, 1 MeV, uh, and essentially the reference then was, was completely adopted by the, the stylized model where you see very little difference between the total dose to the lens from electron irradiation and the sensitive region. Uh, Fortunately for neutrons, we saw very little difference across all uh, uh, anatomical models, the, the voxel phantom models and the stylized model, uh, both total lens and sensitive volume from thermal energies all the way up to uh, the, the highest energies considered. So what were the conclusions of this, this annex? For, uh, for photons, dose coefficients for the stylized model were adopted at reference energies less than 2 MeV. Uh, for electrons, dose coefficients for the stylized model were adopted uh, at energies less than 10 MeV for AP irradiation and less than 1 MeV for isotropic irradiation. Uh, for neutrons, dose coefficients from the stylized model were adopted at reference energies below 4 MeV. So you can see the, the, the importance of going to a more detailed yet stylized model were, were really needed for the lower energy ranges of these, these particles. For, high, for energies higher than these values, uh, we went directly to the voxel phantoms, averaged the, 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 the eye lens dose from the reference male and female, and they became part of the reference. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll conclude my presentation. Thank you.